together. How many of you believe God is real? How many of you believe God is in this place here? And how many of you believe there's a word for you today? So if you believe that, let's read this word together from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Is it up on the screen? Okay. A lot of you are familiar with this passage uh, for those who are visiting. We are actually on the sixth part of our series, the last part. But let's read this passage again. Let's read it together. One, two, three. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Father, we pray, O oh God, for this morning that you, O oh God, will speak to each one of us as we complete this series on the Lord's Prayer or the Disciples' Prayer. And Father, we pray that each one of us will be encouraged and built up in our faith. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, by the way, the screen is not, yeah, the confidence screen is not showing. Okay, please be seated, please be seated. Now, as a child, I will recite this prayer very, very often. And before I go to sleep, I will recite this prayer. And as I became a teenager, lots of temptations started to come in, in my life. Uh, and I will also recite this prayer. And when I came to this part of the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. It was, it's just after that part about forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. So, forgive us our sins, I'm confessing my sins, we're asking God for forgiveness. But then I know that again and again I'll be tempted, again and again I'll fall into sin, again and again I'll need to come back to this. And I'll ask the Lord, Ask him, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil or from the evil one. And as we come to this part of the, the Lord's Prayer, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 13, I want to, to just introduce to you what this word temptation means. This word temptation. It says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, this word temptation show the passage. This word temptation comes from the Greek word pirasmos. And this word actually has more than one meaning. It's not just one meaning, but it has a, it has a few different meanings. But I just want to highlight to you two things. Two things. When it comes to the word temptation, two main things. And the first one is a trial and testing. And the second one will be temptation trial and testing, temptation. Now, there, there's a difference between the two, uh, but it's not like uh, hard and fast that is totally different. But let me just categorize it this way. First of all, trials and testing. Trials and testing. So, lead us not. It's a prayer asking God to lead us not into temptation. Don't bring me into a temp uh, temptation or don't bring me into a trial and testing that I cannot handle, especially on my own without you. Now, in school, how do you know a student has grasped a topic? How do you know a student is following in the topic that is being taught? A very important way is testing, to test, doing examinations. So, if an examination, examinations are not supposed to, not meant for, for you to fail. It's meant for you to pass. The teachers want you to pass, actually. Uh, but if the teacher don't want you to pass, then it's a very, very uh, bad teacher. <laughs> so, you are supposed to pass a test. You're meant to pass a test. I worked as an engineer before, and I was in a department where we were part of that big organization that did testing. And uh, I was involved in, in something about where we test the CPU, the, the, the central processing unit of the computer how fast it was. So those days, one, one gigahertz, 
um, speed, for example, was very, very fast. And then, because we, if you get that speed, then you can sell it for a higher price. And then there'll be lower, the lower speeds. So we test it to make sure that the customer gets according to the specification or something that we promised. We say one gigahertz or 533 or whatever. And uh, we also had something called burn-in where you would test the chip again and again many times to make sure that it works before you ship it out. So you test it out a few cycles, cycle, cycle, cycle. Because after you do that, you test it, you can find defects. But after many, many tests, you find no defect, okay, you can go already. Okay, so testing is very, very important. There's a movie I watched and uh, there's this person who was asking a, a woman. He said that, you know, this man is saying something contradicting to your faith. So this woman, she's a Christian, she said, how do I know my faith is pure or true unless my, test, my, my faith is tested? How can I know my faith is true unless it is tested? That was the reply to the other man. And so, testing in this category goes like this. God wants you to pass. You go through certain tests or trials in life. He wants you to pass that. It may not be pleasant. It may not be easy. But He wants you to pass. Because the consequences of passing the test or the result of passing the test is you become stronger. You are able to you pass this hurdle, you can move on to greater things. You pass this hurdle, you can help other people pass as well. So, we want to pass the test. And of course, uh, each of us are going through different kind of trials and temptations in our life. Trials, testing. And sometimes this is not a direct consequence of your sin. It could be just suddenly COVID came. And then your business suffered major or something that you didn't ask for all the while you've been healthy and then suddenly you got a sickness that you don't know where it came from so this could be trials and testing in our life and these are these are times when we can turn to god and ask the lord to help us now there's another one uh, which is not just trials but the other side is the temptation second part deliver us from the evil one. Now, temptation is different from testing and trials. Let me illustrate this way. When I was in Petaling Jaya, I grew up in Petaling Jaya, and uh, we had a single-story uh, single story semi-detached house. We lived in that house, and outside there, I would, I would hear birds singing. A lot of times, the birds would come. So I'll take rice and, and throw out, and then there'll be a lot of birds. Then a thought came to me, because we used to have a bird kit. Our birds died, budgery, those, those love birds. Uh, we don't know how to take care of birds anyway. So <laughs> I, I took the cage. I had an idea. I think I want to try to trap the birds. So I took the bird cage. Uh, it has a door where it, it goes up and down. So you just let go, it goes down. So I put a, a twig there and uh, a string and I would put grain or the, the rice grains leading up in, and into the trap, uh, not the trap, the, the cage and I'll just wait for the birds to come. I was very excited because the birds did come and there were three, four, five birds and one went in, another went in, another went in, I can't remember how many went in <laughs> and they were all inside there so happy I pulled the string and the, the door came down and I caught the birds. Yeah, success. That's evil, right? <laughs> well, this is exactly what the devil wants of you when it comes to temptations. The devil has evil intent. He has malicious intent. He wants to trap you. And who knows what he's going to do with you once you're trapped. Once you're in his, in his trap. And so this is what temptation is about. Temptation is about falling into sin. Falling into sin. Certain sins, you, you look at it and uh, you look at something and you're, 
you're drawn to it, you know it's not right, but you go and do it anyway. Your leaders warn you, other Christian people, your family members warn you, but you just go ahead anyway and face the consequences. Sometimes consequences are irreversible. For example, King David, irreversible. His family was in trouble after, after the adultery. Sometimes irreversible, you face the consequences. But still, despite the temptation, we still can overcome temptations. We can overcome the enemy. And so, temptations come from the enemy, the, the, the tempter, the devil, the slanderer. Why? Because at the end of it, he's going to use it to make you feel less confident in your faith turn you away from God, condemn you, make you feel that you're worthless, and make you feel that your faith is not real. That you say you believe in Jesus, but you fell into this sin again and again, and again and again and again. Just give up. You, if you want to sin, sin big, don't sin small. Have you ever heard of it? Have you felt that way before? I'm sinning anyway, I might as well sin big, right? Ooh. That's the devil speaking. <laughs> so even if you fail again and again, it's not the end of it. I know someone, he, he took driver's license, first time failed. Second time, he took the test, failed. Then the temptation will be a bribe the people lah. Have you ever tried that before? Thought of it before? Went for a third time. Failed again. For PO. Failed. What if it, he stopped at the third time? Because on the fourth try, he tried again. This time he passed. After 30 years, he's still driving. I was just in the car with him the other day, drive, driving, driving me and my family around. 30 years. Imagine if 30 years ago, he just gave up. Today, he'll be taking grab. Or we'll be taking grab. <laughs> so, if you fall into sin, if you have failed before, whether a test or a temptation and fallen into sin, that's not the end of it. We can get up again and we can move on. Um, Eric was saying that yesterday it was uh, raining and different houses had floods. Yeah, it's been raining a lot and, uh, and we have to open the umbrella when we go off the car. Sometimes it's really, really heavy. And um, when, when I think of, of rain, I actually, actually we, we need umbrella, right? Well, when we're thinking of the heavy rain, let's think also this way. Heavy rain could be a picture as well of the kind of temptations and trials that we are facing even today. Some of you are facing trials and temptations that are like heavy rain. And... We need shelter. One way, of course, umbrella, which is temporary shelter. But a nice roof over our head, that's a very, very good shelter. Even if it rains outside, it's a good shelter. And so I'd like to introduce you to this psalm, Psalm 91. This is the 91st psalm. And uh, the passage is about how we can shelter under God. And of course, this is the sixth part of our series, shel Sheltering in the Father, Sheltering in the Father. So let me read for you the first part of Psalm 91. It goes like this. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, whoever, anyone, you, me, men, women, boys, girls, older, younger, dwells in the shelter of the Most High, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. 
my God in whom I trust. How do you pass a test? How do you pass a test? All the good stu- those are good students or even the lecturers here. If you want to pass a test, one way, of course, is to study very hard. But another way is that you look for people who have already succeeded. They can give you some tips in order to do well. And this is one person who had walked with the Lord and he says with so much confidence, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High, whoever, especially me, because I'm speaking from my testimony, this is what the psalmist is saying, will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, I, speaking in the first person, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So the first thing is that my refuge, my refuge, verse 1 and 2, my refuge, my refuge. Uh, Refuge, home, dwelling place is a very, very important place where when we come back, it's so important that we come back, we feel safe. We feel that our house is safe. That's why a lot of us like to go back home. Even if we are on the road and we need to go somewhere else but we're passing by our house we just like to go back for a short while for five minutes or so just to just um, come back to that safe place house is a safe place to return to so this is what the psalmist is saying in his personal experience he's saying that it's a shelter shelter of the most high shadow of the almighty just like umbrella or shadow when we go under the shade but this shadow is like the a bird who whose wings are covering its cheeks, covering the cheeks and protecting the cheeks. And my refuge, refuge is a safe place. In some places where they used to have bombings, there would be bomb shelters where if there are bombings happening, you go there, even if there's a bomb that falls nearby, you are safe in there. And fortress, Fortress in those days is a, is, a, is, a, is a place where you can, it withstands attacks of the enemy, a fortress. And so the psalmist is sharing all this, you know, it's a shelter, it's a the shadow of the Almighty, refuge and fortress, something that is really, really sure, something that is really, really solid, something that they can rely on, he can rely on. And so what does it mean? Dwelling. It reminds me of this passage from John 15, 7. It says, If you remain in me, remain in me and my words remain in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Remain. Remain. When we remain in God, in His, in the safe place, that is the safest place we can be. When we face trials and temptations, tendency is for us to panic. How many of you panic and forget about God? You don't pray. First thing is not praying. First thing, go and find solution. The ones who are very task-oriented, go and look for solution first. Worry about God later. <laughs> and later we find that as we are depending on our own strength, we cannot solve it. And then we get discouraged. And then we start to question God. But if we start with a thinking or, or a heart of faith first, Perhaps things will grow much easier for us. And we we'll see with eyes of faith, see positively, see that God is in the picture. God is refuge. God, God is our refuge. We can trust in Him. So whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High. And what he's saying is that learn to trust in God. Learn to trust in God. Dwelling, waiting in His presence, trusting in the Lord. A lot of times in funerals, we sing this song. I don't think this song is not just for funerals. (laughs) It goes like this. What a friend we have in Jesus. Have you? It goes like this. uh, Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. My daughter told me when I sing out of tune. 
Yeah. That's why I'm not on the worship team. Take it to the Lord in prayer when we face trials and temptations. Oh, even this songwriter knows about trials and temptations. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Trust in the Lord. So, my refuge uh, for the psalmist. And then he says something. He goes, in, go, goes on to say this. The second part is, and actually an invitation and encouragement for everyone. Encouragement for you and me. He says that surely he will save you from the fowler's snare. So he starts to become, now that he, 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 he has experienced God's sheltering, God's refuge, he is encouraging other people. He's encouraging you and me. And he's saying this, surely he will save you. There's a few things i like to highlight. Four pictures here. The fowler's snare, a trap, a trap to, to catch animals for, for eating. Deadly pestilence. Deadly pestilence. It could be some sort of pest um, that, that could be destructive. Flying arrows. Can you imagine... You're in the war zone and a bullet is flying or bullets are flying. You don't even know where it comes from. Just like those days, arrows flying. You don't even know where it comes from, but it comes and it might just hit you in the wrong place. Destructive plague, disease. So all these are hidden attacks. But the psalmist is saying that even in these hidden attacks, God is there for you. In all this, the words that are used in this passage here, He's like a shield. Shield. When the arrows come, shield. He is like a rampart. Rampart is like a strong wall that is surrounding a city, fortified where the soldiers or, or the the ones who are fighting better, they can run across the wall, around on, on the wall. So it's, it's a thick wall. And bird that protects its chicks. So there's both a strong protectiveness, but there's also like a loving protectiveness that God provides for us. He protects us. And when we think of these hidden attacks, it could be spiritual attacks as well. Attacks from the enemy. The enemy wants, to, wants us to fail. But God is there for us. And with that, I'd like to invite somebody who has experienced God in his life. He's got a lot of stories to share. I, share. I don't know exactly what story he's going to share. Uh, but uh, it's always very interesting to hear him share this story. And uh, you can see a lot of people's lives been helped through this brother's life. Alive. Uh, brother Daniel Chan. Call him Uncle Daniel. <laughs> Morning, church. I'm Daniel Chan from the Senior Family Care Group under, my, under the leadership of Brother Lai and Sister Chikun. I come to know Christ through my brother-in-law. I make many, I made many excuses. I'm sick. I'm not free to join, to, to join you. But my brother-in-law never give up. And I family, and, and family, Follow him to church one day. He brought me to Hop Church. There was opposite Timber Medical Center when I was center. When I entered the church, I feel the joy and peace in my heart. The joy was so great that I cannot know how to express to you all. <laughs> I'm not a believer before. I went to many temples, temples, big or small, far and near. I earn a lot of paper money, around 200 case. I'm looking for God who can bless me financially. With friends, we went deep into the jungle to bet for 40 numbers. <laughs> See how crazy I was. I feel so stressed and fell into deep depressions. I start reading the Bible every night. I learn to kneel down and pray. When I knew, when I knew down, I start to manifest. My body turns forward and backward like a rocking chair. I cannot stop, and the Spirit of God is in control. They continue for almost two months. 
I knew that God of heaven is doing something in my life. There are many spirits of other God in me. I took many talismans before from the temple. Church, do you want to know what is talisman? A talisman. It's a piece of yellow or red paper issued by the temple. This, uh, the Hu Tao. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, so fast. That was true. That was thought to have magic power and bring good luck. After I bring and mix with water and drink it, sometimes they, they ask me to swallow them, the testament. I made them into a small bowl and swallow them. It stuck in my throat. <laughs> and I nearly choked to death. I come to, no, I come to church every, earlier, every Sunday to prepare myself, and I was filled by the Holy Spirit when praising God. God's story took all my stress and depression away. <laughs> step by step, God of heaven lightened my depths, only if you put your whole trust in Him. Before I am one of the, the or before I'm the one who fears darkness and ghosts. I, after accepting Jesus Christ as my Savior, God gave me the gift of light. So darkness and ghosts have to free. Amen? Yeah. I even go after ghosts. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God gave me the gift of healing and deliverance ministry. After three months in the church, I joined my leader, the late brother Jonathan, to pray for a house, to pray for the house. My leader never taught me the house was haunted. When I reached the house, I started to pray in the spirit. My leader and few of them went to the first floor and asked me to pray on the ground floor. I was alone. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of the Lord spoke to me on a soft voice. Go and walk around seven times at the dining table. After I walked around seven times, I saw an old, old woman with a long head and a, and a long black shirt and a broom <laughs> under her leg. <laughs> then the Holy Spirit spoke to me again. The wall of Jericho collapsed. Demon must go. Amen. That which cast spirit freed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> when the owner of the house came down from, with the team, I asked the house owner, yeah. She said, Every morning, around 5 a.m., they saw the witchcraft spirit at the dining table, enjoying the food. <laughs> the food turns smelly and green every time. After the prayer, everything seems okay. Praise the Lord. Church, you see the power of prayer. Church, I encourage you to come to Sunday service earlier to fill your church with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> come and join church in prayer meeting, you see the serve the power of God in you. Thank you. Thanks for listening. Actually, if you want to hear more stories, invite him for coffee or breakfast or lunch. And uh, uh, yeah, there's the deliverance ministry as well. So sometimes um, if they're really in your house or in your life, there are some areas where, where really you want to break through um, and you find that there's some sort of demonic or some sort of spiritual thing that's holding you back, uh, you also may contact um, our leaders, including Brother Daniel, Uncle Bernard as well, and uh, we can pray together with you. Okay, and, and a lot of testimonies as well. A lot of testimonies uh, of people being free, set free. Okay, so, yeah, hidden attacks, attacks from the enemy. Now, the second thing is this, against physical harm. And it goes like this, if you say, if you say, so again, this is a, an invitation, an invitation for you to say, the Lord is my refuge. An invitation. And the invitation is for every one of us 
to say that the Lord is my refuge. God is my refuge. God is my strength. Some people say, I cannot turn anywhere else. But if you believe in the Lord, and the Lord is your refuge, you don't have to worry that there's no other place to turn to because you can turn to Him. So the Lord, if you say the Lord is my refuge and make the Most High your dwelling, then He goes on to say these things. And I'll put it this way, physical harm. He protects us against physical harm. No harm, no disaster will come upon you. Um, he will send His angels so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. In fact, this passage was used by the devil to tempt Jesus. Say, Jesus, you know, jump down and the angels will come and rescue you according to God's word. Jesus rebuked him and said that, you know, don't test God. So God is, God is testing us or God tests us, but we are not testing God, you know. You go into exam, you don't test the examiner. A lot of people say, oh, you know, the exam question, wrong. The question, uh, sometimes really wrong. <laughs> the questions in the exam are really wrong. But the, the person who's being examined is not the examiner. The person who's being examined is the student. And so we are not examining God. We are not testing God. We, we don't test God. Don't just jump down from a 30-story building to test whether the angels will come and protect us. Jesus already said, no. <laughs> okay, so don't use this passage this way. Don't use, it's the wrong, wrong use of the passage. But what it is, is it's saying that if you think of God as your refuge, He can even protect you physically from physical harm. It goes on to say lion and cobra. Lion and cobra. When I think of that lion and cobra, I think of some of the experiences in the Bible where Samson defeated the lion. David defeated the lion probably more than once. Daniel faced lions. Sleeping with hungry lions, the lion didn't think him as appetizing. Paul was bitten by a poisonous snake. The villagers just stood and looked at him. This person is going to die. But as they waited and waited, I was so long, I haven't died yet. No symptoms. No symptoms. Because Paul just shook off the snake. And then he was like normal. And then they said, wow, this guy, God is with him. So God can protect us supernaturally, physically. Sometimes, even without us knowing, God protects us. Have you experienced it before? I'm sure some of you can be like Brother Daniel who can share testimony on a stage like this. I heard of stories where somebody at the brink of death in the hospital bed came back to life and now is all good. Even for myself, one time, at least two times, I look at my rear view mirror. I drive in, uh, in KL, highway. Look in the rear view mirror. <laughs> one time at night, just after I passed certain things, some vehicles, there was an accident just behind me. Then, on the highway as well, we passed by, just behind, not too far, 100, 200 meters away, there was a collision behind. And I was thinking, that could have been me. Some near misses. So God can protect, even without us knowing. And sometimes, when we fall into sin, in our stubbornness, we keep going to that place again and again, and with so much warning. Sometimes, because our flesh is weak, we keep going to going ahead and making that wrong decision that could really cost us. One more step and that's it. And then somehow, God closes the door. Somehow, God opens our eyes to see the truth. 
Because we, we thought we were right all the time, but somehow God gets our attention. Very embarrassing when that happens. Especially when you keep telling people, I'm right, all the, I'm right, I'm right. But then God opens your eyes. So God can protect us even that way. But of course, please don't walk into dangerous situations where we can fall into sin. But by God's grace, He can even protect us and stop us. It shows how much He loves us. Now verse 14 to 16 goes like this. Um, it's actually God's promise. So how can we be sure that God is really with us? Some of you say, Pastor, ah yeah, this one is the psalm. My situation is so bad at this moment. Well, His promise. Let's look at God's promises here. And um, he, who is He speaking to? Suddenly, you know, first of all, is the, the psalm speaking. Then second is the psalm saying, if you were to call God your refuge. First of all, he said, God is my refuge. Then he said, if you were to call God your refuge. And then now God speaks. Now he wants to assure us. He says, because he loves me, I will rescue him. So God is, is promising for those who dwell in him, to those who love him, to those who acknowledge his name, to those who call on him, he will rescue. Rescue. Do you need rescue? Some of you. Some of us, do we need rescue? Maybe before, maybe the future, maybe even now. We need to be rescued from our situation. And these are the promises. Eight promises. Uh, let me list for you down uh, these eight promises. I will rescue him, God says. I will rescue you. I will protect you. I will answer you when you call on my name. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you. I will honor you. I will satisfy you with long life. I will show you my salvation. I will save you. I will show you my salvation. So how can we be sure of God's protection and refuge? Because He promises it. He says that when you call on me, when you acknowledge me, when, because you love me. Between somebody who doesn't love God and somebody who loves God, who do you think God will favor more? Somebody who doesn't love God, somebody who loves God. Who do you think God favors more? The one who loves Him, right? Another thing that we can be sure of when we face our trust and temptation, because God is not a distant God who doesn't know anything about trust and temptations. Temptations. Psalm 22, verse 1 to 2. And this psalm is actually, it mirrors what Jesus experienced on the cross. He says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. Sometimes we feel like that. Cry out to God and God doesn't answer immediately according to how we want it to be. My God, I cry out by day, you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. And so when we are facing our trials and temptations, let's remember that Jesus himself faced the worst of testing and the worst of trials and temptations. That because he went through that, he understands our situation. And because he went through it, he stayed, he stayed on. He went through it. He didn't run away. He didn't stop. He finished the work on the cross so that you and I, who call upon God's name, will be saved. Salvation of our soul is one, of course. But there are other things that God can help us and save us and deliver us. God understands us in our trials and temptations because Jesus himself suffered on the cross for your sins and my sins. But he was victorious over all the trials and temptations. He rose again. And so you and I as well, as we look to the Lord Jesus, we can also be assured that we can overcome trials and temptations. 
we can pray this prayer. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's arise together as we conclude this series. Prayer is basically talking to God and sometimes we need to be reminded because God is an unseen God. Not with our eyes, but we, we see with our faith. So sometimes we forget and we, 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 don't, we don't communicate, we don't pray to God. But we pray this in this prayer. Let, let's uh, look at this passage again. Look at the Lord's prayer. It goes like this. this. This then is how you should pray. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, let's say it together. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let us come to God the Father. Whatever situation you're facing right now, some, some of you are going through something that is really, really tough. But you can be very sure. It says here, if, if you say that the Lord is your refuge, He will come and rescue you, deliver you. Trust in the Lord. Let's come to Him. Let's sing this song together as we call on the name of the Lord Jesus.